Okay, now we have the Joomla Framework 2.5, the Joomla Framework 1.5, and the WordPress Framework 3.4.2 unzipped into separate folders on our web server. We're ready to go. Now before we do this though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, every time I need to create another site, right, if I want to create another Joomla site or another WordPress site, I need to basically do the same thing, unzip the contents of these zipped packages and place them into a directory on a web server. Right now we're just using our own local web server, but I'm going to need these in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all three and I'm going to drag them into the www folder for safekeeping. So now I have them for when I need them later. Okay, and I'll just close this. So we're done downloading. So now that we have these, these um, frameworks for Joomla and WordPress unzipped into the folders, let's take a look at it and see what it looks like through the web browser. So I'm going to go into my web browser, okay, and I'm going to refresh the window. And when you refresh the window, you'll get a fresh copy of what's in your WW directory. And you can see, I've got now, you can see the zipped files that are in there, as well as my directories. Notice this says directory, 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 site one, site two, site three. Let's take a look at what happens when we visit the directory. When you visit the directory for the first time, you basically are met with your installation script. So the first time you visit your Joomla website, once you have the files unpackaged, it wants you to configure and install the site. And what that means is it's going to run through an installation script which will, in which you'll give the necessary information to get started working with this Joomla website. Now, to, for this to work, you're going to need to have a database created. Notice what it says in step four, database, right? And so you're going to have to have a database created, and you'll need the name of the database and the username that has privileges to that database and their password. Now, we haven't necessarily built one for all these sites, but I wanted just to visit it anyway to see what's going what's to come. So if we go back, and let's take a look at the Joomla 2.5 folder. This is the Joomla 2.5.6 installation script. This is the framework for installing and configuring a Joomla 2.5 site. So this is what you should see the first time you download and unpack uh, Joomla folder and you visit it and once again we're going to need the database. Now let's look at see what happens when we go to the WordPress one. So site 3, the WordPress, I'll click on that one and you can see we're met with a message that says there's not a wp-config.php file. So um, is that a problem? Well not really. As you can see in the folder, if we go into the folder, there actually is a let's see here, wp-config-sample.php file in there. So all we have to do is say create a configuration file and we're met with this window right here. So um, now we're ready to run and install all three sites. But before we do that, we need to create databases for each site. So what we're going to have to do is go in go to our WAMP server and visit our PHP My Admin page where we can access and create the databases. Whoa, and as you can see I'm met with a HTTP 403 forbidden error. So I'm forbidden to all of a sudden getting to PHP My Admin. Well why could that be? I can't get to PHP My Admin. I went to WordPress it was working before and I clicked on PHP my admin now I can't get there well between videos I was fooling around and so I went in and edited my host file we talked about the host file once again being in the C drive right in the Windows folder in the system 32 folder in the drivers folder and in the ETC directory right and I'm in the host file now once again you have to have administrative privileges when you open up Notepad if you want to open up and edit this file. And you can see I had commented out, I was fooling around, and I commented out this line, right, which says 127.0.0.1 goes to localhost, and I commented out this line, 127.0.0.1 tab localhost, right? 
and I just left the old way of doing it, which is localhost tab and then the IP address, right? And because this is the old school way, at least I thought, in the older version of Windows. So with both of these lines commented out, we cannot get to the page, we cannot access localhost forward slash PHP my admin. Now watch what happens when I edit this file. If I remove that and I remove that, and now they're not commented out because there's not a pound sign in front of these, and I'll hit File Save, okay, and I'll close it, and now if I hit Refresh, I should be able to get to that page, and we'll close this, we'll try again, here we go, open up a new page, and go to PHP My Admin, and you can see that now I can get in. So you can see how the host file could directly affect your ability to work with your Apache web server on your local machine. Now, a lot of viruses and malware, if they get a hold of your system, will try to mess with your host file. That's why the host file is protected and you need administrative privileges just to edit it and save it. So once again, that's a file that can mess things up. So I'm into my PHP my admin, which is an administrative front end to the MySQL server. And you can see we've already got one database that I created for site one, site one underscore DB. So let's make some more. So I'll go to databases and I'll create site two underscore DB for database and hit create. And then I'll create site three underscore DB and I'll hit create. So now I have three databases created. If we click on each database, you see that there's not even a single table in there, but that doesn't matter. What the databases need is a database and a user. And if you click on privileges, you'll see the user that has privileges, and you can see the user is root. Root, localhost, root, colon, 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 one, let's say IPv6, uh, this is a loop back for IPv6 and root 127.0.0.1 and IPv version 4. Root has access all privileges, right? Grant, yes, has access to this database, as well as database 2. If we click on privileges, see the same thing, and database 3. Now, in the future, when we're working on a web host on a public web server, you're not going to have the user be root because the owners of the web hosting company will be the only ones that have root access. You will have your own username and you will need to have access with all privileges to your database. But it won't be user root, it'll be whatever your username is on your web host. So now we're ready to install to our sites. So I'll go back, and we'll start with Joomla 1.5, which I'm the most familiar with, and I'll click on that, and now it's time to walk through this installation script.